Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be talking about some tips for Dark Rain for you to build your own budget run. Um, I'm just going to give you some ideas about the best way to go about that and, and then at the end of the video um, it was requested that I show how I am farming this boss meaning using a full bonus team for as many drops as possible. So I'll toss that in at the end as well. You can use timestamps to skip there if that's, if that's all you care about. But um, as far as a budget run for Dark Rain, because Dark Rain cannot be damage capped, there is no perfect score. That just means a budget run would just be whatever you could possibly build to do the most score within your own possible team lineup. So because there is no like goalposts to reach, me building a budget run would just be like me just picking random units out of a hat, which you may or may not have, and just saying, okay, this is budget, but it may, you may not have this, etc. So we're gonna go over instead some options for the fight and just some ideas. So when you're building a Dark Visions team, the number one first thing you do is your big breaker. Now we're going to focus only on physical breaks because honestly mages in this game are just not great and not worth using if the boss has equal defense and spirit and this one does. So we're going to go for the physical side. So step one is we're going to look at 90% um, defense breakers. So you're going to pick your best unit from this list that you own and I put them kind of in descending order of you know power level for Dark Vision. So Laura Croft is obviously the MVP. If you have her, that's your pick. If you don't have her, probably Hawkeye is the second best because he can sort of contribute a little bit of damage. Um, the next best would be either Venera or a Crowned Lock. They're basically both worthless as far as damage contribution. But I put, I put Venera higher because, you know, she doesn't require crowns. Locke does. If you have none of these, then I guess Cacteria is your next best option. She's an 89 breaker. She doesn't really bring much other than breaks. Her damage is worthless. Uh, but there you go. If you don't have any of these, then you just get your best breaker you do have. But, you know, the fact of the matter is you're not going to score very high if you just don't own access to a big break because that is the number one most important thing in the entire Dark Visions is having a strong breaker. That is like the first step of getting a good team. Once you've picked your breaker, you're gonna to wanna to pick your support unit. Now Dark Rain is only weak to holy elements so it kinda of like pigeonholes you into a holy team. So the best option would be probably Fina the Return or Cetra Aerith is also very, very good. Not quite as good as Fina, but um, you know Aerith still does most of what you want. Uh, if you don't have either of those, then I guess EX3 Kryla is probably your next bet. She can single target 45% Holy Amp, and she can multicast it, so you can, you, you can amp your whole team with that. And I guess beyond that, maybe the Riku, the Neovision's base Riku, she can do a 25% Amplify, and I put her over some other units like, for example, um, like Chow and all that, because Riku can contribute a tiny, tiny amount of damage, so it might be a little bit of something, but truthfully, you really want one of the first three units on this list, either Return Fina, Set for Aerith, or Kryla EX3. Once you get that, then you want to, if you can fit it, you want to bring some, some killer buffers. Now, for this boss is human and demon, and I put on the screen some just various options. Um, Fina the Return does both human and demon killer. She's obviously very good for this fight. Um, Starlight Elena also does human and demon killer at EX3 for the entire party. Uh, the problem with her is her damage is very, very low, so it's almost like bringing a dead slot. But she does have Holy Element, and she can contribute a little bit of damage. It's not going to be much. But she does buff both killers at 150%, which is really high. Now, some other options for Human Killer would be Setra Aerith, who may already be on the team anyway. She's only 100%, but it's like a free slot because she's already there anyway if she's your element, element supporter. And then for Demon Killer, some other good options are the new Return Reagan, who's really good here because he's like an 88 breaker. He's a 145 Holy Imperil, and he's a 160 Demon buffer for the whole party. 
And then Esther. You know, Esther, um, you wouldn't bring her just for the demon killer, but she's very likely to be on the party anyway if you own her because she's just a high damage, period. And she just happens to bring along 120% demon killer for the party. So you want to try to fit a killer if you can. Um, it's kind of a balancing act. You know, there are other killers, like for example, Dark Fina and Saul can bring, you know, 150 demon killer for the party. But they're going to bring literally nothing else relevant except for demon killer. And that is probably not worth a party slot. And then once you get your, once you have your support team lined up, you know, you've picked a breaker, you've picked a support, you've maybe picked a killer. Um, then you're going to want to just fill out the rest of the party with damage. So I've listed just some good options on the far right side. This is not the only option. These are just some of the meta options. Like Kane is probably the strongest burster. Esther is right up there as well. Esther can potentially be higher than Kane, depending on your party. Um, Graf and Crowned Adele are both really good. Graf and Crowned Adele do have a little bit of problems though. Um, Graf is hard to gear for killers. Adele is very hard to gear for killers and she really needs like um, an external weapon in peril, for example, like fist or gun, which you're probably not gonna have in the party. So Adele, you know, is good, but she might not be worth bringing because of that. And then some other options you've probably seen in other videos, you know, Roberta, Titus, if you've crowned your Furion, he's decently strong. Laura Croft, not even counting her breaks, but she's actually a good finisher just all by herself, which is why she's obviously the best choice for breaker, because she can break as well as bring relevant damage. And then the Secret of Mana Rees, um, with the Dragoon changes, she's a Holy Element Jumper. You know, it can, do, it can do good damage. She's definitely on the lower end. And then after that, it really falls off pretty hard, like as far as options go. Like there are, you know, a ton of other options in the game, like, you know, Carton, Cabalt Prince Noctis, or whatever his name is, Cabalt Blade Noctis, etc. Like these, these units are just low damage in Dark Visions. If they're your best option, go for it. But you're probably going to want to stick to the, the ones on this list. Now, special mention does go to Angela. If you have Angela, she is very strong, even though she's a mage, she is worth using. Um, you would then need to fit in a good spirit break for your Angela. So, you know, these 90% defense breakers are not going to work for Angela. They only do, like, for example, Venera can only do an 85% spirit break, which is not good enough if you're bringing in Angela as a primary defense. You'd have to, like, fit in Louise or something. So anyway, you know, like I said, um, you know, I could build a team and I'll just pick random units on this list. Like, I could pick, um, like, you know, I'll bring Venera as my breaker. I'd bring Kryla as my support unit. I might pick, like, you know, um... I don't have Reese, so I might pick like Roberta, and then I already did a clear with Kane, Esther, and Roberta, and Titus. So yeah, the clear I already did already used four units from this you know MVP list. So for me to go a budget run, I'd have to like kick those off and bring things like I don't have a Crown Furion, I don't have Reese, I don't have Graf. So for me to do a budget video myself, I'd have to go so far down. I'd be bringing like Carton and Noctis, maybe Final Fantasy VII Cloud or something. And like the, it's, it's just gonna be terrible. It would be like a, such a low score, it's not even worth recording. That's why I'm saying um, you should just pick whatever you have as the best option. Now to give you some more help, I'll show you the boss's attack pattern so you can like build your own team. So every single turn, Dark Rain does a single target physical attack which you can provoke and evade. That'll never deal you any damage. Just make sure you've got an evade provoker to ignore that. Uh, every even turn, he does AoE dark damage, which can be nethocited or reflected or immune. That's every even turn, so two, four, six, eight, etc. Every third turn, he does another dark AoE. Um, so, you know, turns three, six, nine, etc. So, for example, on turn six, He'll be doing both of those because they overlap. So you'll need double Nethysite if you're going that long. And then every five turns, the boss does an 800% in peril and a really strong single target nuke. So if you're not killing him by turn five, you're going to want to either provoke this with a Dark Absorber like um, Dark Veritas or Carton's LB on the party that turn to absorb Dark. You could also do things like gear someone for 800% resist after a buff, which is possible, but it's hard to do. 
Another option is to provoke the Imperil with a different unit and then magical cover that unit with someone else. For example, Esther's Omni cover and provoking with someone else. Let's just say, for example, your Aerith is your provoker. If she provokes the single target in peril and then Esther covers with 100 dark resist, you'll still be immune to that. So there's a way to handle that. Here's the boss's AI. And let's get back to the fight itself. And now I'm going to go and show you how I am farming the boss just to get currency drops. So here's my farm team. Um, I'm, cho I'm choosing this because these are all, um, you know, EX3 bonus units. So it's the maximum possible drop rate. Now this party can sometimes OTK on turn one, depends on variance. Sometimes we don't OTK, but it's always a turn two clear with this setup for me. So we're going to use Fina and Lid to just do an 85% break with deep sea swimming. Blue Fina is going to Magic Mind Blast. This is a 100% Light Imperil. And we're going to Crowning Veil. This is AoE Light Imbue and Light Amplify. And the nice thing about this is Blue Fina is a free unit. Everyone should have it EX3. Now, Cabalt Noctis is going to triple in the shift form. We're going to start with Return of Dawn. This is an even bigger Holy Imperil. And then just double Stardust. Rain Neovisions, again, a free bonus unit is going to Prominent Saber to start off, and then just double Blaze Saber. Um, nope, wrong skill, wrong skill. We're going to Prominent Saber and double Rising Saber. Do not use Blaze Saber. That imbues the party with fire, which we don't want. Golden Riser is going to use his Tag LB. And then a Roberta is going to triple. We're going to use Mega Breath and double Mystic Breath. Now, you might notice I'm not really doing like the setup stuff on these units. I'm just going for the turn one OTK, or maybe a turn two, depending on variance. So we're going to start the chain with Noctis and Rain. Once that gets going, we're going to send Riser and then send Roberta. And this may or may not kill the boss, you know, depends on variance. It didn't kill it. Oh well, that's okay. So he's going to do some single target physical attacks on turn one. We're provoking with Fina, you know, whatever. So we'll just reload our, um, our Stardust Ray Chainers and go again. If this doesn't kill, We'll manually quad cast our tag chain with Roberta, but there we go. We got it done. So there is how I'm farming it. You know, I'll do it one more time because sometimes, depending on variants, it's actually a turn one OTK, but not always. And, and when it isn't, whatever. It's an extra turn. It's 50 energy. It's not. It's not. It's not like you have to do this fight. You know, so many times per day. 50 energy. We get 200, 280 energy a day. So at the most, you're doing it six times a day. You know, if you're not refreshing. So here's the breakdown here. As you can see, Riser and Roberta do the majority, and then the support chainers, just support chainers. If you don't have all these units, um, you know, just swap it up. It's not really that big a deal. And here you go. So the drops are random with a full bonus team, not counting the return units. The return units give more bonus. I don't own any of them, so I can't use those. But with a full bonus team, you're getting 30 of each material from Dark Rain with an extra three, so that's 390 of each material, but it is random. Keep that in mind. So we'll go for one more clear real quick. And the reason, the reason I like this is because we can just push the reload button. Um, reload, we'll do this and this. Wait for this to finish, get all the buffs going. We'll chain our Stardust Rayers. Wait for the chain to build a little bit. Then send our Tag Chainers. And, you know, with variance, we might OTK, we might not. Well, exact same variance, 6% again. Oh well, not a big deal. We got it done. It's fine. So we, we passive provoke and there it is. We reload this. And again, if, if you don't kill, just you know, quad your mystic breath with Roberta and that'll dramatically overkill. Assuming you're using the same units as I am, you know, you might not have Roberta on the party. But as you saw, Golden Riser does a ton of damage. And um, you could also bring something like uh, Madame Adele and then just entrust Golden Riser again and do it again a second turn, and you'll get a double LB off, and that'll be fine as well. But there it is. Okay, there's one more thing I want to show you guys. I'll show you the gear real quick too, but before I before I show you the gear, I'm gonna point out something really, really quick for your farming. And this, this doesn't count, because we, 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 we did a double turn with Roberta. So that doesn't really count. And again, so, oh man, so many wickedly owning. I already got 
I'm already finished that item. That kind of sucks. That's actually the downside of farming rain because farming rain is random, and for whatever reason, he loves giving me the wicked the wicked lion emblem. And I actually finished that item. I'm still farming him because the wicked lion item is the only item that I'm finished crafting. Once I finish the second item, I'll then go and start target farming. But um, keep in mind these two second to last bosses, the Gehenna and Wicked Weapon. Look at the bottom. It is not worth farming the hard mode of these bosses because the hard mode is 40 energy, but it's half the ratio if you notice down here. So for Gehenna and Wicked Weapon, you want to farm level 1. Level 1 is better ratio per drops. Do not farm hard mode Gehenna and do not farm hard mode weapon because those are bad ratio. Only farm the normal mode. Now as far as the day one stuff, these you, you do want to farm the hard mode because they give, as you can see, they give the proper ratio. I'm not sure why um, a limb decides to tr troll their players and not, you know, if no, no one reads the fine print, they won't even realize they're farming a worse ratio. And why do they even do that? That's just spiteful. That is spiteful and stupid design. I'm going to call it out for being bad design. But um, that is the JP server. And then, but then again, it's also Global's fault for not fixing the problem. They just blindly copy-pasted, which I don't love either. Anyway, there was some tips for making a budget Dark Rain and just how I'm personally farming Dark Rain for my turn. Usually turn 2, sometimes turn 1 OTK if we get really good variants on the double hand. But um, not always the case. Oh, oh, yeah, you're probably wondering the gear I use. I mean, the gear is, the gear, it's not important, just the best you have. Like, there's really no gear that I'm using that's, like, critical here. It's just the best gear you have. Come on, game, load it up. I want to show. All right, so um, Roberta is using uh, her spears. We're not doing spear and peril, so her damage is nerfed a little bit. Uh, Demon and human killer, there it is. We're using that card for the killers. Um, max Demon, Max Human. Uh, Summer Fiend and Lid, they're literally whatever. All they do is break. I geared her just because, whatever. Uh, passive Provoke, Evasion, Blue Fina. And I gave her Guts just in case we didn't kill the boss by turn 5. She would die to the turn 5 attack. Um, but, I mean, we're, we're, we're not going to turn 5. <laughs> but in case we did, in case we did go to turn 5, she's prepared with Guts. Um, Noctis is using, um, just whatever, uh, demon and human killer build. We're only chaining, we're not jumping. So, 250 demon, 275 human. Rain is using a great sword. We are using the, um, great sword card for the auto and peril. But anyway, great sword, uh, you know, chain cap up, chaining damage. Like, his damage is low, but it does support chain. Um, 275 demon, 300 human, and then Golden Riser is actually a pretty useful unit here. Um, we do his LB on turn once, the tag chaining LB does okay-ish damage, not great. Um, he has the six times chain cap naturally, so we just geared him with a with a great sword because we have automatic great sword in peril from this. Well, not that, whatever, you get it. Uh, and then chain cap up um, against humans and demons, so we've got Maxed LB, maxed human, max demon, 7,500 attack power. And there we go. That's how I'm farming. Okay. See you next time.